So let's get started in the right side view. Let's look, let's imagine that we're looking in from the side over here. We're going to see a rectangle that's 50.8 wide by 12.7 high. That would be right down here. That would be the side view of that. We will see the side view uh, of this cylinder over here, and then we will see this plane where it does its, where it makes that run out right up here. And uh, so here's how I'm going to start this. I'm going to start with a rectangle command. I'm going to go to this corner. I'm going to move in this direction here. And uh, I'm going to give it the x and y coordinate. And since I'm moving to the left on the x, I'm going to type minus 50.8 comma. And then I'm going straight up 12.7 on the y. So that's not minus. I can, so I'm just going to press enter. Now look at this. I have a center line as my current layer because I have center on and so how can I fix that? Well there's two ways I could do it. I could either select it, go up here and pick on object which would move it to there. That's a quick way to do it. But I'm going to undo, show you another way to do it. <coughs> Pardon me. Right over here on your home tab you have an icon that's called match properties. If you pick on match properties it says select a source object. So all I have to do is go and select one of my object lines and then it says select the destination object and just pick right there and that's another way to move it to that layer. Now to save myself from having to do that in the future I'm going to go ahead and make object my current layer. All right. Now <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to draw a line from here straight across perpendicular because I know that my right side view would be as tall as that from the quadrant projected over from there. So let's see how we could project that from the top view around and figure out where the location of this is. So I'm going to zoom in just a little bit here. And so I'm going to start a line. And this time I'm going to use uh, this object snap icon right up here, it's called Temporary Track Point. This is a very powerful tool. I'm going to pick on Temporary Track Point. I'm going to go to the front edge of my cylinder in the top view and I'm just going to park my mouse there. I'm not going to pick this. And, but I'm going to park it there until it has acquired endpoint. And I know it has when it tells me it has the endpoint. And at that point I'm just going to move straight across to my miter line. When it gets to the miter line, it's going to light up with, a, with an X because it finds a, an intersection or an apparent intersection. I'm going to pick right there. <clears throat> Pardon me. I'm going to come straight down following my dashed line. And when I get to that point right there, I know I'm where uh, I want the top of my cylinder to be. So now it's just a question of how far down does my cylinder come. So I'm going to go over here to the cylinder, actually the circle in the front view, and I'm going to park on that quadrant until it acquires the quadrant which it has. Now it's telling me an S quadrant. I'm going to follow that straight across and get come back down and you can see that dashed line coming across from my front view. All I need to do is pick right there. And then I'm going to come over here and go perpendicular to my back edge. So there is my cylinder in the side view. Now I need that line right here that that blends in the, the tangent line right here and here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to start a line I'm going to use temporary track point. I'm going to park on this corner for a second until it tells me it's acquired that. I'm going to come straight across, pick on my miter line, and I'm going to come down to here. And this time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to that endpoint right there, and I'm going to acquire that endpoint, and I'm going to come across. Uh oh, you know what? I lost that because I zoomed in too far. If I get it off the screen when I'm using temporary track point, I can lose what I have. So I'm going to have to kind of zoom back out a little bit and try it again. And it's hard to get just the right. Well, I can do it from here. Let me do the line again. Choose temporary track point. I'm going to park on this point right here. Follow the X across and then pick. I'm going to come down here and at this point I'm going to come over and I'm going to acquire my tangency point. It calls it an end point. I'm going to come over to here and at that point I see the, the two cross, the two dotted lines meet. I'm going to pick here. Come straight down here perpendicular and pick. Now what I want to do, I'm ready to trim this because this is going to go away. This line, this edge of my cylinder, once it blends into that, it's going to go away. So I'm going to pick on my trim command and press enter. I'm going to trim this. I'm going to trim that. And uh, now I have the makings of my right side view. Now it's also possible for me to project my hole through here and my center lines by projecting them from up here. So I'm going to pick on the line command. I'm going to pick temporary track point. I'm going to go to this quadrant. I'm going to wait till it acquires it. I'm going to come straight across, 
pick at that point, come straight down, pick here, pick at the perpendicular and press escape. Uh, I'm going to select that and go up here and put it on the hidden layer, which in, in this drawing I have set to dashed. And that puts my hidden line in. I'm going to do that again. I'm going to pick on temporary track point, go to that quadrant, wait till it acquires it, come straight across, pick, come down to here, pick, pick, and uh, I can match those properties, pick on match properties, select my dash line or my hidden line and pick right there. And I'll just put this on the center layer. And I'm going to go to line and temporary track point. I'm going to go to the end point in my center line, wait till it acquires it, come straight across, pick at the intersection, pick at the intersection, pick at the perpendicular. Now I'm going to zoom in again. I need to pick on this, drag it up, 6 and press enter. I'm going to pick it here, drag it down, type 6 and enter. And uh, you can see I've got my center line. Now sometimes when you draw a line you may not see the dash in there, especially on a short line like this. And the dashes in non-continuous lines are controlled by a command called line type scale. So let's just see what line type scale is set to. To, uh, to uh, invoke the line type scale command just type LTS and press enter. And right now my line type scale, it says, is set to 10. If I couldn't see those gaps, I would probably try some different numbers. I might start with 15. I might go to 5. Sometimes you have to play around, especially in a metric drawing, uh, to get it to show the dashes that you want. OK, so let's look at our right side view and <clears throat> see what we're missing now. We're missing some hidden lines that come straight across from where this hole goes through. We need some center lines here. And we need some hidden lines over here. So to draw the hidden lines, you just pick on the line command, park right there on that quadrant, come straight across, pick here, and pick there. And do the same thing here, pick on the line command, acquire the quadrant, come straight across, pick, and pick again. Now you can see that both of those are uh, they're drawn as center lines, so I'm going to pick those guys and put them on the dash layer, what I have listed as the dash layer. It's probably got a hidden line assigned to it anyway. And uh, finally, I'm going to do a line. I'm going to acquire this center point right here and come across and pick here and pick there. I'm going to zoom in on that and pick on it. Pick on that blue dot, which is the grip. Drag forward like that. Type 6 and press Enter. Grab this one. Do the same thing. Drag it. Type 6 and press Enter. All right, so you're going to follow the same. Uh, steps over here to uh, project down from this quadrant and this quadrant right here to get your hidden lines in here and then project down from this center line to get your center line. To put the center mark on here, you would just go back to your center mark, pick on that. Always choose the largest circle so it will go outside that and uh, that will give you your center mark. Now one more thing, if you don't see the center mark coming out like that, here's what you need to do. You go down to your uh, dimension toolbar to the very last icon, which is dimension style. Pick that. And whatever your dimension style that you have, it will be highlighted right here. And you just come over here and pick modify. And then we're going to go to the symbols and arrows tab. And we want to make sure that line is checked. If you're not seeing uh, the center mark like that I showed you a second ago, it's probably because this is is uh, the check mark next to mark is what's checked rather than the uh, radio button next to line. So if that is checked, you'll probably see the full center mark. So you pick OK and close, and that's what gave me the center mark that I have right there. At that point, uh, there's just a few little touch-up things that I need to do to, uh, to finish my views, like add those hidden lines I was talking about in a center line and just check making sure everything else is right. But essentially, that's how you draw the shaft guide.